What's up, gang? This Ken Zerk, Ken Zilling, and Zika Milligan, the villain, Philip Trilligan, and we are back on Face Day Night. Last episode, that boy, Archer, or a different Archer, some dude with golden hair, he pulled up. Um, apparently, him and Saber got some past. Uh, we killed, we didn't kill Caster. The new Archer killed Caster. Ah! Shit! Fuck! We learned a lot of things about Saber, her past. Um,. A lot of things about Shiro and their connection, but let's get into it. All right. February 14th. Fate. Fate, chapter 15, Utopia. This is, guess this chapter now. Then, the next thing I know, it's morning. Pathetic. I couldn't sleep a wink. I sigh and turn off the ringing, ringing alarm clock. Today, no matter what she says, Saber and I are going on a date. My first priority would be to take her to plenty of places so she'll have a chance to enjoy herself. I've been trying to search my mind for the perfect spot for a date, but before I could come up with anything, my alarm went off. I turned the alarm clock on just in case. As hard as I tried, I still couldn't think of anything last night. So I borrowed an alarm clock from Tosaka, figuring I might have to pull an all-nighter. Not that it's done me any good. Come to think of it, I've never been on a date. I sigh again. That's sort of a problem. I'm nervous enough, plus I didn't sleep. But I think the worst part is how shocked I am that after staying up all night to think about it, I couldn't come up with a single thing a girl might like. This nigga gets no fucking bitches. Fine, I'm gonna... Leave it all to chance. I'm just gonna take her all over the place and she'll learn what it's like to have a good time. I'll just take her to cute shops. Well, I feel like there's a fundamental flaw in that plan, but I've already made up my mind. There's nothing else I can think of, but what this all boils down to is that today is gonna be a day packed with fun and it'll go on until Saber says she has enough. Oh, actually, I forgot. Last episode, Shiro looked up into the Tsukihime moon and was like, I love Saber. So we're taking her on a date. So, Ilya's villa has not yet awoken. No, she's still asleep. It doesn't look like she's gonna wake up anytime soon, so you two got lucky there. If Ilya were awake, she would have followed Shira around and gotten in your way. Yes, we cannot have her accompany Shira like she has been doing. Things may have taken an unexpected turn last night, but today we shall go and search for the remaining masters. Shiro does not have time to be taking care of Iliasville. Oh, uh, well, I wasn't talking about her getting in the way like that, but oh well. It's not my place to tell you exactly what you're doing. This is a you and Shiro's problem. Tosaka laughs mischievously. Saber's like, what? A problem between Shiro and I. We finished breakfast and it seems like a good time to leave. Saber's ready to look for masters, but I, I'm determined to execute my plan as well. I just need to be a man and tell her. About that, Saber. We're going to go to the neighboring town today. I have to get ready. I want you to do it now. If you have to get ready. Are we going to search for masters? I would suggest we go to the suburbs instead of the neighboring town. That's not what we're doing. The two of us are gong to go. They, they forgot how to spell, okay. The two of us are going to go out and have fun today. So there's no point in us going to the suburbs. Don't nobody have fun in those suburbs, except for the rich people. That's so stupid, why did I say that, huh? Saber freezes. I tried to ignore the, to uh, the sign of Tosaka trying and largely failing to control her laughter behind me. I'm gonna beat the fuck out of her for that later. Um, Shiro, I do not understand. It is not you and Ren going out to have fun, but... If I'm going out, you're the only one who could come with me, Saber. So Saga's gonna stay back and watch Ilya, so she's got nothing to do with this. This is ridiculous. You and I are going to the next town will... Going, you and I going to the next town to investigate will yield nothing. There is no point to this. What are you trying to accomplish here? Saber's pretty clearly frustrated. I kind of figured something like this would happen, but things are looking even bleaker than I thought since she clearly thinks we're going out to town to search for masters. 
This is rough. I'm being really clear, but you still don't get it, Saber. I'm trying to ask you on a date. I ignore Tosaka's stare as I speak to Saber. How did bro get so bold? Like, I own everything. Like, this dude couldn't... This dude couldn't look her in the eyes without being all like... <laughs> hold on, hold on, no. My heart's beating out. <laughs> now he's over here like... I'm asking you on a date. How are you not understanding? Like, bro just... Whoa! I'm not sure how much Saber understands. She is a little stupid. I do not understand what you mean. Can you clarify, Shiro? I am a little stupid. She looks even more irritated and stupid. And suddenly, it's like a switch flips in my head. There's no sense beating the bush here. <laughs> beating around the bush. We gotta beat the fuck out that bush. It'd be best if we I would, it'd be best if I was just blunt with her. Shiro, if you tell me to go to town, then I will obey. However, I would appreciate it if you explain what the purpose of this date is. No matter how familiar I am with this age, there are terms I still do not know. Please, do not use technical terms without explaining them. <laughs> Tosaka's like, this dumbass. Not really a technical term. I can teach you if you don't know, but a date is when someone goes out and has fun with a girl. Huh? <laughs> Saber goes completely still. A girl? Do you mean me? She's dazed now, muttering. When I nod yes, Saber looks even more confused. I understand the meaning of the world now, but I still do not understand your intentions. For what reason would you do such a thing? Huh. I wasn't expecting this question. I thought she was smarter than this. I, I mean, I know what the point of a date is, but now I'm on the spot and Saber wants me to explain it to her face. Well. Ah, she's confused because you're using an unusual term. Drop date and just use a term that's easier to understand. Listen, Saber, a date basically means a tryst. Shiro may be talking about going out and having fun, but what he's really getting at here is the whole boy trying to attract the attention of a girl he likes thing. <laughs> Saber said. <laughs> now she all nervous. <laughs> I cough loud. So Sokka may be right, but I'm pretty confident that a date and a trice are two different things. But I don't think it's worth mentioning. From her reaction, it looks like Saber finally understands what a date is. Exactly, Saber. We're gonna head to town, and we're not gonna fight. We can't fight during the day anyway, because there are people around. So there should be no problem with us spending the day however we want. That may be true, but this seems pointless. I can see nothing that you and I will gain from doing such a thing. Look at that face. That's not entirely true. And I wouldn't mind if it were. I've decided to spend a day with you, Saber, so don't worry about me. We're going out to town and that's that. Nothing you say will change my mind, Saber. I look her straight in the eye. Go on a date with me! Come on, Spell! Go on a date with me! I'm gonna pull up on a hose. You gotta pull up on a hose with a command spell. Go out with me! <laughs> you, hey! Go out with me! Command spell! I command you to go out with me! <laughs> Saber, Saber ponders for a while, looking serious. Then even if I refuse, will you be heading out to town on your own? Yeah, I'm definitely going. Or everything I spent all night thinking about will have been a waste. Then I cannot allow you to go unaccompanied. I am your servant and so I cannot leave my master alone. Look at her making excuses. After taking a deep breath, deep breath, no lotus juice. Saber answers in a usual manner. Okay, that could have gone better, but at least I've managed to convince her to come out. Now I can come in. Oh, stop! I shouldn't sweat the small stuff at this point. Have fun! Bring back something nice! As we step outside, I make a rude gesture to Tosaka since she made fun of me until the very end. So, what specifically are we going to do, Shiro? Well, let's just head to the neighboring town. We'll catch the bus at the intersection.
The hilly pass is unusually quiet. It's a little past nine in the morning on a weekday and the town is starting to come alive, but it must be a little early to be heading out somewhere. There's no one on the road. It's like we have the road to ourselves. Now that I think about it, I don't feel guilty about skipping school anymore. I've been cooped up in the house these past few days. Of course, you are a master, so you should not be walking around so casually. Saber's tone is sharp. Saber following behind me is nothing new, but it feels different today. I feel this immense pressure directed at me, and that's putting it mildly. Command spell, hold my hand, interlock fingers. <laughs> I can tell Saber is gonna be tough to handle. Command spell, sit next to me on the bus. <laughs> we get on the bus. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Command spell, lean your head on my shoulder. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It would have been stuffed with people about an hour ago, but there's only a handful of people using it now. But the only people on the bus are old women with children, so it feels like we have the place to ourselves. Saber, let's sit at the very back. I call out the Saber, who for some reason tries to sit at the front of the bus, and I lead her to the wider seat at the back. Who the hell sits in the front? Oh, that's beautiful. Oh man, they went all out with the art right here, bro. Holy shit. Saber quietly looks out over the passing scenery. I steal a glance at her and realize how crazy I am for what I'm trying to do today. Taking the bus to a nearby town is an ordinary thing for me, but here in this ordinary place, something extraordinary is happening. Or, while well, I'm finding myself questioning whether I'm actually doing this whole date thing, and my mind starts spinning and whirling like some complex cube puzzle. Ah, uh, crap, I'm getting really nervous. It's kind of like, it's kind of getting out of control. I take a deep breath to calm myself down so Saber won't notice. But then, and I know how stupid this is, I take another look at Saber. Oh my, that's so beautiful. What the hell? My heart skips a beat. I hardly recognize Saber as she sits next to me. Or well, it's less that I don't recognize her than it is that the situation itself is unrecognizable. It makes me realize that she is something else. She's different. I didn't realize it when we were home. The, this ordinary everyday life seems to me like it's becoming something entirely new and different just because Saber's here. Her golden blonde hair, her green eyes, those alone are enough to make her overwhelmingly beautiful. It hadn't really crossed my mind since I never had much to compare it to. I remember the first time I met Saber. I must have been avoiding her because I was too embarrassed to admit that I was admiring Saber. No matter what Saber says, to me, she's a girl before she's a swordsman. I didn't know how to react to her and I didn't understand my feelings for her. I have to admit, I know I, I know I sound stupid. I've developed trust and affection for Saber, past the point of no return, and now I've decided to go on a date with her. The order of events is all backwards. Now as I get off the bus, I finally realize what a big deal it is to go on a date with a girl I like. But that's okay. I can only give it my all, so I can't very well take it all back and cower in fear now. I calm myself and try to shake off my ridiculous apprehension. The bus crosses the bridge and drives towards the development area and its masses of tall buildings. I breathe out, almost whistling and ready myself. The familiar bus announcement tells me we have arrived at the Shinto station. It's only 9 in the morning, but the area around the station is already busy. Most of the shops don't open until around 10 o'clock, but cafes and smaller bookshops are starting to open up. There are already more people here than you'd expect in Miyama, even if it were a weekend. She giving me that dumbass look. We get off the bus and Sabra looks around the area, displeased. I don't blame her. She hasn't really agreed to the whole date thing and everyone is staring at her now. I doubt she loves that. Crap. I should have figured this might happen if I brought Sabra here in the morning. But this discomfort is bound to follow us around all day. 
The only cure for this I can think of is Saber enjoying herself so much she forgets all the awkwardness. All right. I smack my fist under my hand and look over to Saber. Saber, before we start, is there anywhere you'd like to go? We came all the way out here, so we can do whatever you want today. I want to look for masters. I want to stab niggas. No, there is nothing. This place holds no particular interest to me, and I have little knowledge about it with which to make any other decisions. Are you sure? Well, this is going to be tough. Then I really do have to just go wing it. If you don't know, if you don't know, if you don't want to go anywhere, and I don't know where to go, things are looking kind of grim. I hope you are not saying you have made no plans for the day, Shiro. Huh? Well, I have some plans, but they're a little light on details. For the time being, let's just hit up as many shops as we can. That's kind of hard, too. I know some stores I'd enjoy, but I have no idea what girls like. Honestly, if I'd known this would happen to me someday, I'd have been smart to go out with a girl from class at least once. I do not intend to object, but there is something wrong with you, Shiro. I would not have thought much had you suggested to take a break, but that you have no plan for this interlude is completely ridiculous. Crap, now Saber's in lecturing mode. This is the first time she's ever given me such an earful outside the dojo. She wasn't into this from the start, and I figured all the people staring at her wouldn't help. I didn't realize it'd be this bad. I have been waiting for the opportunity to bring up your lack of planning. You may be keenly aware of the people around you, but you care little for yourself. Consequently, you end up paying the price for your lack of self-regard. Hey, are you listening, Shiro? I am. Bottom line is that you don't understand why you're here, right, Saber? I know the places I'm gonna take you will bore you, so I don't blame you for not liking it. All these notificationals. Uh, it, it is not that, but I... I am only saying that now is not the time for this kind of thing. I know that, but I'm also ignoring that since I've decided to spend all day with you on a date, Saber. I'm not going to change my mind no matter what you say, that's that. I look straight at Saber. The only thing Saber can do is look back at me in shock. But if you have something to say, I'll at least hear you out. I'm sure you have things to say, and I'd appreciate it if you told me now. That way we won't have to worry about holding back later on. If you say you don't want to go on a date with me, I'll think of something else we can do. Um, no, you do not need to go through all that trouble. I just, uh, it's, uh, it's odd seeing Saber at a loss for words. Well, if you have nothing to say, then let's go. You don't have to get mad about where we go since you don't have any requests. Maybe we should go to an aquarium. I hear those are popular. That sounds good. So I grab Saber's hand. Sh Shiro, I am not complaining, but I do not think it is necessary to hold hands. Huh? Well, we're wasting time here, so we're gonna run a bit. I'll guide you to where we're going, so follow me and don't let go. <gasps> but not like this. I start running without waiting for Saber's reply. I've been pretty clear with Saber, so no more being pathetic in front of her. For now, I should need to escort her to every place I can think of. Saber's hand in mine, I run to the crowd. Apparently, Saber's given up resisting as she just follows obediently. It's a little before 10 o'clock. We have two hours until lunchtime, so I'm going to make the most of that and really knock Saber's pant socks off. Calm down, Zeke. Those two hours were like a storm. First, we tried a, bo a, bo a boutique I'd normally never go to. Then we tried our hand at bowling while I taught her the rules. I couldn't find the aquarium, but we fed birds at the park. We visited an interesting antique shop that ended up being a lot of fun. And I maintain that I'm that not going to the movie theater was the right choice. Anyway, I spend the whole time taking her to places I figured a girl might like, and it was two hours of failure and defeat. However, I tried to spin it. The day wasn't really shaping up to be a date. <laughs> it felt more like a battle to the death in which the first person to give up loses. Wherever I took Saber, she acted exactly like she always has done. Once in a while, she would fall so quiet, I would start to worry if she was truly angry. Her lack of reaction made it clear she was not having fun, which pushed me to try even harder next time. And so I ran all around the city, desperate to make Saber smile, but noon came before I actually accomplished anything. And, with Saber's reminder that it's lunchtime, I decided to take a short break. However... What is this place? 
I can't help but blurt it out as we sit down. I suggest going to a coffee shop near the river for lunch. That was the only advice Osaka gave me last night. So I did as she suggested and picked this restaurant. But I never imagined it would be so pretentious. I take a look at the menu. Luckily, the menu has Japanese translations next to all its foreign text, so I can at least figure out what all the dishes are. The problem is that I've never heard of any of these dishes, and the prices are outrageous. Where are we, on Mars or something? I have no idea what to order. I stare at the menu and growl. Shiro, I thought we came here to eat lunch. Saber looks and sounds a little concerned. Yeah, but this is not really what I expected. I look up, and what I see is Saber looking like a cornered rabbit. If you are uneasy, we can head back to the mansion. I actually, pre I actually prefer the food you prepare, Shiro. Huh? Does that mean you want to go home? No, it is not that I want to go back, but I've been nervous all day and I'm more tired than usual. Hold on! Hold on! She's just a little shy. She's just a little shy. She feeling that guy. She feeling that guy. Really? Oh, I thought about it back after we had lunch and a bit of a break. But if you're tired... I mean, I thought about going back after we had lunch and a bit of a break. But if you're tired, maybe we should take a longer break here. No, that is not what I mean. Tired is not quite the right word. It is more like... Well... Saber stops. Fortunately, I'm the only one who hears that faint squeak from her stomach. Oh. She could have just told me she was hungry. I am sorry. What I'm trying to say is that I would appreciate it if we could eat lunch as soon as possible. Got it. Yeah, it may not be interesting, but let's order whatever looks okay here so we can get our food quick. It should be easy if it's a light if a light snack is all we need. I order two things that seem like lunch dishes and we and we quickly eat. While I'm drinking my after meal coffee, I start thinking about what to do in the afternoon. What I learned this morning is that physical stuff like bowling is no good. Saber is extremely competitive. That in itself is good, but Saber's looks already draw enough attention. And when she gets like that, well, she stands out even more. After we finished the game, Saber got sulky because of all the attention she drew. So we're going to avoid physical activities. Hey Saber, I'm going to ask you again. Is there any way you want to go? Me? No, nowhere in particular. I do not know my way around, so I will keep following you. Saber lifts her teacup as she speaks. She ordered black tea to have after her meal, and it seems she enjoys its flavor. I hardly serve black tea at home, and even if I did, it'd just be cheap tea bags. Saber must not have been satisfied with the drinks I've been serving at home, since it looks like she pref prefers NIGGA! She prefers black tea. I'm sorry, I was stuttering so hard, I got a little pissed. Well, I should be more mindful about that starting tonight. Saber isn't doing much. She's just drinking her tea. She doesn't seem particularly happy, but she doesn't look exactly bored either. I guess she's just being Saber. As sunlight pours in through the window, Saber sits upright, sits up straight, gracefully sipping from her teacup. It's the first time I've seen her do this, but it seems so natural. It's like I've seen it a million times before. I did not mean to do that. I don't know why I'm thinking that. Saber, at least as I know her, is always serious. Only focusing on only focus on wielding a sword, on fighting. Oh, I get it. It's only natural. I only think of her as the girl who takes up her sword. The moment she sets her sword aside, Saber is always calm and gentle. The scene, this scene doesn't really, doesn't feel new or not unnatural be, fuck. This scene doesn't feel new or unnatural to me because it's just her being who she is. No matter how skilled a swordsman she is, this is Saber just being normal. Or wielding her sword isn't what makes her exceptional. I once thought, I once thought while I was dreaming that she would be suited for fighting. I don't think I'm wrong there. That she was suited for fighting, I don't think I'm wrong there. No matter how great her sword skills are, no matter how, battle, how many battlefields she's been on, as long as she was really herself, 
She couldn't have found the battlefield a comfortable place to be. That's why this is how it's supposed to be. Saber's not wielding a sword. She's just resting and unwinding. She belongs in this serene setting. Nothing changes in the afternoon. I take her to every shop I can think of and Saber follows quietly. At least it's not as awkward as earlier in the morning. Either I'm getting used to this situation or Saber's giving up. Uh, we on a date. On a date and fate. When I get home, so I'm finna get cake. I said I'm finna get cake. Finna beat that back. Then I eat that ass. Wait, hold on. That shit's strange. I feel mad deranged. That stop. Okay, let's let's go. She's still quiet, but the more I watch her, the more I notice she looks either angry or not angry, which is really confusing. Whenever I see Saber coming out of a store looking excited, I feel this sense of accomplishment. It really makes me happy. Then, after careful consideration of what Saber might like, I'm not certain, but I, de I determined this is a shop that most likely to please Saber. Saber stands in front of the store, mouth agape. Her mouth is not agape. I'm, I'm not sure if her shoulders are trembling because she's angry or excited. I just can't tell. Shiro, where are we? I hear this is the biggest stuffed animal shop in town. I've never been here since men aren't allowed. Why aren't men allowed? I want stuffed animals. Obviously, it's not that men aren't allowed in the store. Okay, that's nice. It's just that most of the customer base are girls. So this is unspoken rule about men not going inside. Fuck y'all rules. Nigga, I want a bear. I want a puppy. Besides, there are only girls in the store right now. Saber, with her beautiful blonde hair, is drawing attention while I'm drawing glares for being a guy. They must all be trying to keep me out of their sanctuary. And I can't agree more. Even I don't think guys should be in a store like this. I would happily go to a store like this. Well, we've come all the way here, so don't hold back. Let's take a look around. Do you have a favorite animal saber? Uh, well, I suppose I find lions and leopards to be quite lovely. Do you find that strange? <laughs> the fuck? I find myself turning away, fighting not to laugh. I'm not sure why Saber liking lions is strange. Shiro, your reaction does not seem right. It fills me with an inexplicable sense of rage. Or is it my imagination? No, no, sorry, sorry, please do not murder me again. I, I couldn't help but laugh. A, a lion is just so perfect for you. Yeah. What? It is not right to laugh at someone's preferences, Shiro. And there is nothing wrong with lions. As I said, I, I, I'm sorry. To make it up to you, I'll take you somewhere good, so don't get mad. I try to fight down my laughter and walk into the store. Walk into the store, and I'm not with the whore. Saber is that girl. Saber is that's wifey. And I'm feeling so dang, so diviny. And I'm finna go in. Ah! Kaidi! Hold on. I see. Looks like the stuffed toys are over there. And takes about an hour to get from one end of the store to the other. I'm watching in silence as Saber stares at the stuffed animals while I worry about the dozen or so sets of prying eyes staring at me from around the store. I've never been so exhausted in my life as I am today. The terrifying thing is that we've only made it through half the store. Saber frequently is frequently is paralyzed. That is. She often stops and stares at the stuff as a stuff as a stuffed animal. Even after all this time, we're only halfway through the store. Saber seems very interested in the other half of the store, so I guess I'll just hang around while she does what she wants here. Shiro, why are you sighing? Are you tired from walking so much? Huh? Yeah, I'm just a little tired. I usually don't get tired so easily, but today's special. I guess I should be careful about doing things I'm not used to. I heave a sigh. I don't want people staring at us when we're just walking around, but I'm, I'm uncomfortable with it when we're in this girly shop. When you're mentally drained, the first part of your body that feels it is your legs. What about you, Savior? 
This must be your first time in a store like this. Let me know if you get tired. Yes, I am a little uncomfortable, but you look far more so. Not only here, you did not seem comfortable in the previous shop or the one before that. I hope you are not selecting places you do not wish to go. Suddenly, those words dispel all the worries and mental exhaustion I felt earlier. Yeah. Honestly, I might have chosen a bunch of places I wouldn't normally go. I knew it. That is ridiculous, Shiro. You are aware of your own dislike, so why would you purposely go there? You will... It's not... It's the sort of place girls like, right? I was the one who made you come out with me, so it's your day. Besides, it's not so bad since you're with me. I'm with a beautiful girl, so I don't look completely out of place. All the stares directed at me aside. That, that is absurd. I may not be armed, but I am still a servant. Even if I am not fighting, you need not treat me like a woman. You must treat me as a servant like always. You are the one being absurd. You are a girl. I'm not trying to treat you differently today. Unless you feel like I am. Hold on, you're feeling your boy? You're trying to feel your boy? Hold on. She's bewildered. Sambra's mouth hangs open as if she's just now realizing this. No, you were the same. You were acting the same as you always do. See? No need to worry about me. So, let's keep going. If we're gonna buy your favorite thing in here, we still have to we still have to see the other half of the store. I take Saber's hand. She offers no objection as I tug her along. Oh, that is right. It has always been like this. I do not know why I'm realizing this now. She murmurs to herself, sounding dazed. What's wrong? The uncomfortable day passes by in a flurry. Saber never laughs, not once during the whole day, so neither do I. No part of the day was particularly memorable, but neither was there any painfully boring aspect. Basically, nothing significant happened. The way it went, maybe Saber would have been happy if maybe Saber would have been happy if we stayed in the dojo and trained together. But today wasn't all that bad either. Even if it didn't end up being all that exciting, I should be proud that I at least managed to take Saber around. After the war is over and once everything goes back to normal, I don't want to look back at all this and realize that all the time I spent with Saber was in combat. Even if this entire date was stupid, she needs to spend some time doing something other than fighting, or there's no point in her being here. So yeah, I should be proud of myself. The end is near. When everything is done and when there's no need to fight anymore, if Saber can look back on this moment, that's enough for me. We walk back home. Just we're trying to get on the bus. Archer pulls up and rains 50 billion swords on our head top. Bust the head off like a champagne bottle. I would prefer to walk home. Saber finally voices a preference. The winds are picking up. The brilliant sunset paints. The brilliant sunset. That's supposed to be one word. Don't confuse me, nigga. The br the brilliant fuck. The brilliant sunset paints the red. Fuck. The brilliant sunset paints the bridge red. Oh. Saber notices something, stops, and looks over the bridge into the river. She's looking at the mountain of rubble. I say it's a mountain, but the pile isn't really that high. Steel frames and other things are piled up just below the water level, and it's only slightly disturbing the flow of the river. I don't know what happened, but some boat probably sank and pieces of it drifted here. I hear some of the neighboring residents have been complaining, trying to get rid of the pile since it's so unsightly. What is it, Saber? Did that catch your attention? It is nothing. I only noticed that it's that I only noticed that it is still there. You see, I caused that. During the previous war, I was forced to do battle over the water, and I had to use my noble phantasm. The only damage is where the river drying up, but unfortunately, it also struck a ship that was anchored there. Huh? Struck with Excalibur? Yes. Fortunately, there was nobody on board and the damage was minimal. The river has gone back to normal, so I believe there is nothing to be upset over. Well... I feel bad about it and I regret it. I should be more careful. 
when we use Excalibur, I need to be mindful to use it somewhere there's a lot of open space. Like out here. Shiro, are you still mad? Huh? No, I'm not mad. I was just surprised. Plus, it's a reminder that there are still remnants from the previous war. Compared to the wasteland at the Central Park, the amount of rubble in this river is nothing. Though I guess the ship's owner might not have come out of that so great. Please, do not worry so much. Kiritsugu said the boat's owner had insurance, and they originally parked the ship with the intention of using it as a cushion to dampen the river's flow. The ship acted as a wall that mitigated the damage from my noble phantasm. Does that mean you destroyed the ship knowing it was there for that purpose? I was not aware. Kiritsugu had prepared, had that prepared without my knowing. He must have been able to predict how the battle would turn out. I did not know because he did not say a word before or after he prepared the boat. And then Saber looks down at the river, probably thinking back to that earlier Holy Grail War. The surface of the water glitters with, su with, with, with reflected sunlight. The wind coming from the river flutters Saber's hair. Please give me a CG. Please give me a CG of Saber again. I want another CG of Saber. She's so beautiful. Saber, did you have fun today? I'm suddenly scared Saber's gonna disappear. To ask a question is probably better not to voice. Come again? Did you say something, Shiro? I did. I asked if you had fun today. This is beautiful. I hold my breath. Saber looks a little confused. Yes. I would be lying if I said none of it was new to me. She says it fondly, like she knows she'll have never have another day like this. Which is exactly why I already knew her answer. The only thing left for me is to nod in agreement, and then I walk her home. At least things can still go back to normal if I leave it at that. I see. I look at Saber and nod. Then let's come again. We'll have other chances to do something like this. It may be a dangerous to say. Saber's expression hardens. I think she realizes what I'm trying to say. She looks directly at me and sh silently shakes her head. There will not be a second time. This happened today and that's where it will stay. Why not? I know exactly what Saber's gonna say. I know I won't be satisfied with their answer, but I ask anyway. I need not explain. Service exists only to fight. What we did today is only me denying what I am. I obeyed only because you determined we need rest, but from here on, there is no need for me to rest. There are only a few enemies left. Should you order me, I can leave and search for Lancer right now. She focuses on me, her eyes blazing with her fighting spirit. Saber's trying to say that she can head into battle at any time she's ordered to, and that really sets off my anger. You need to control your anger issues, bro. You get mad a little too easily. What the hell? Are you really that eager for a fight? Of course. The more I fight, the closer I get to the Holy Grail. Battle is our priority. I thought you understood that. Yeah, I know. And it doesn't make any sense. I've been wanting to tell you. You're contradicting yourself. You keep saying fighting is important. But you've never once thought you wanted to fight. You've got no other choice, so you're fighting just because you're forced to. What? That is not true. I do not hesitate to fight. I have told you that I would do anything to win. Yeah, she did say that. But that doesn't mean she likes fighting. As long as you can manage, right? Listen, Saber. If all you needed to do was defeat the other masters to get the Holy Grail, you would have done that already by attacking innocents like Ryder. But you won't do that. That is because it's not that you don't want to involve innocent people. You know very well that people die in battle. That's right. That's why you wanted to minimize the fighting. Once you start fighting, people die, which is why you wanted to end it as quickly as possible. In other words, you're just scared of there being casualties in these battles. Saber's eyes grow wide like she's seen a ghost, but quickly narrow. She grits her teeth. You are wrong. I am not afraid of fighting. 
Yeah, you're right. You probably haven't been afraid from the start, but that's only because you squashed all your own feelings, like fear, beneath your duty and dignity as king. Ridiculous. And yet you don't want to fight. You were just good at it, but it's not a talent you actually wanted. Look, I'm gonna be blunt. You're not fit to fight. You never wanted to take up the sword in the first place. You're just saying it's what you want as a way to talk yourself into actually doing it. On top of that, why didn't anyone, anyone, why didn't anyone around her, even herself, figure it out and just say something? Shiro, I will brook no further insult, even from you. You can't stand it because it's the truth. If you admitted it, you'd never be able to fight again. I hear a grinding sound. Saber is glaring at me, trying to hold back her anger. I can't back down now. I know I'm right. I can't back down. So you should stop. You wanted to stop. You know you're not fit to hold a sword to fight, so just quit it. Stop being a servant and do something that suits you better. It's not too late for her to find whatever real human happiness she's always wanted. And for that, I would... Do not be ridiculous. My only option is to fight. I am here only to obtain the Holy Grail. I offered my entire self to protect the vow I made as king. I can do nothing else. That's... She's just an object seeking to obtain the Holy Grail. That's what ticked me off the most. Why does she talk like she's only trying to convince herself? Everyone around her took her at her word because she kept insisting on stuff like this. You dumb fuck! That's not true! There are plenty of other ways to live your life! You're here in this age now! It's not like back when you were alive! You should try to live your life for yourself! Don't make the mistake of using the Holy Grail! What I say next is what I hope for most. Forget about the Holy Grail. Don't use it for anyone else. If you're here, then you need to live here happily. My ears pick up the sound of wind. Saber doesn't answer. She doesn't nod. She only looks straight in my eyes. I cannot agree. I formed a contract to obey you. I did not give you my heart, master. Saber speaks slowly and clearly. I will not break my vow as a king. I have a responsibility to fulfill my duty. King Arthur's goal is to obtain the Holy Grail. Even if that were finished, I will never go back to being Altria. My wish remains unchanged. From the moment I drew the sword, my vow could never change. What are you talking about? That's not what you really need to do. You'll never be rewarded for what you did, and that's wrong. You don't need the Holy Grail. Besides, besides, Saber's wish won't come true. What's already happened can't be changed. Saber, you can't redo something that already happened. Or at least you shouldn't. I know you've already figured that out. No, that is absolutely... Then I'm going to tell you. No matter how bad it ended up, you can't change what's happened. Asking for a do-over just because you didn't get the results you wanted is the way spoiled kid acts. We're at an impasse. Saber doesn't say anything more, and I don't have anything more to say. The sound of the wind stops, or rather, it pauses for a moment. An instant later, it picks back up, just as I feel the wind on my cheek. I thought you of all people would understand. It becomes a headwind. Is that all you have to say after wasting our day? Her voice is cold. I hear only rejection in it. How arrogant. What knowledge can you claim to possess that lets you understand me? You have no right to involve yourself in my affairs. Ordering me not to fight? An untrained master like you, who is so reliant on my protection has no right to talk. You should keep such drivel to yourself until you are able to fight for yourself. Though I am unsure whether that will ever happen. No. This isn't just drivel. It is most assuredly is. Think only of myself. I can say the same of you. 
You place no value upon your own life. You say that I am wrong while doing the very same thing. Only the dead think of prioritizing the lives of others. How can a complete fool who does not know the value of their own life spout such nonsense? Saber, why you? Did I strike a nerve? I would be happy to dissolve our contract right now. You have no desire for the Holy Grail in any case. I will defeat the remaining masters and obtain the Holy Grail alone. If you do not want to fight, then you need only hide. Saber, are you serious? My voice trembles. My teeth are rattling. I'm angrier than I realize. Of course. My only goal is attaining the Holy Grail. Nothing else is important to me. And you, Shiro, are no ex exception. Damn. I struggle to breathe. I try to fight the blackness encroaching on my vision. Try to get my heart beating again. You idiot! Fine! If you're that eager to fight, go do it yourself. I don't care anymore. I can't keep my emotions under control. I yell out some sort of lame excuse and turn and run. I run away from her. And for an instant, I think I see Saber just standing there, dumbfounded. Damn, damn, damn it! I just run. I don't know why I'm mad, only that I am, so I run in a fit of rage. Nothing else is important to me. And you, Shira, are no exception. I grit my teeth. Honestly, I'm getting dizzy just thinking back on what she said. I'm so unfocused, I might run into a pole or something. Damn, she really said that shit. Motherfuckers can never just be honest about how they feel. I swear. Well, it would be easy if I could do that. If I was only angry at Saber, I should have taken it out on her like an idiot and just been done with it. But something else caused my fit of rage. I'm not mad at Saber. I'm so frustrated that I keep running, and I don't allow myself to catch my breath because I know I'm a spineless good for nothing. Saber just stands there gaping at me. I heard her faintly, just as the wind changed directions. I thought you of all people would understand. Damn, the hell would I know that, you idiot? The hell I would know that, you idiot. I immediately regret my words and nearly trip. What did those words mean? Yeah, it sounded like parting words, but also like she'd been about to cry. Now that I think back, that was probably the only honest thing she'd said. She'd hung her head as she muttered that to me. Her voice was a mixture of expectation, disappointment, and pleading. Then, who was the betrayer and who was the betrayed? I run into my room and slam the sliding door. I flop onto the floor, arms and legs splayed. I'm tired of standing. I just want to lie down and go right to sleep. But even when I lie down, my body's on fire. My heart feels like it's about to burst and my lungs are desperate to take in oxygen. I ran back here at full speed, not even pausing once. So I can't blame my body for the discomfort. I feel like I still haven't run enough, but my body is telling me to slow down. It takes a bit, but I manage to calm down. I take a deep breath, hold it, then release it. After my breathing calms down, there's just one thing left swirling in my head, and it's a simple question. What am I really angry about? It's not really something I need to think about. I was running because I know I'm helpless. I can't help Saber. It's so frustrating I'm angry with myself. I can't do anything. I said I was gonna make her smile. I decided to protect Saber, but I couldn't do anything. And that's making me so, so angry. But what can I do? If Saber doesn't even want happiness, there's no point in someone else trying to get involved. That's why I tried to help Saber find happiness on her own. But she told me those efforts were futile, even called me an idiot. A fool who doesn't even know the value of his own life, huh? But what do I do with all that? 
I value my life and I don't want to do anything to end it. And my life has nothing to do with Saber. Bringing my circumstance into this wasn't fair. No matter how stupid I am, I know for sure that Saber's wrong. But when she outright rejects me like that, there's not really anything I can do. Damn! She can do whatever the hell she wants. I roll over to lay flat on my face. Now all I see is a tatami mat. So I may as well close my eyes and empty my mind. I don't care what happens to Saber. If the Holy Grail is so important that she should just marry it. If she's going to be this stubborn after I've told her so many times, I should just stay out of it. Or I'll end up getting burned. Actually, I might not get out of that mess with only a burn. I might actually get really hurt. The hell? I've already gotten hurt. This is worse than just getting burned. I met her, fought with her multiple times, and I survived. I saw, the, I saw into the depths of her heart in a moment of incredible intimacy. I remember her heat, the light deep inside her. I don't know why I'm remembering this right now. There's a faraway grassy field, memories of a girl left behind. The moment I think back to that beauty, nothing matters anymore. What Saber says doesn't matter. It's just a thing to fight. Then don't expose your own weakness for crying out loud. Saber's just unfair. I don't know what exactly is unfair about her, but I know something is. Angry as I am, I can't hate her. The more I want to forget her, the harder it gets. It's all tangled up. Damn! So the person who falls in love just gets screwed over. But I can't help it. I can't give up no matter how many times she tells me it's useless. I just have to see it through to the end. I thought you of all people would understand. I remember her face on the verge of tears. Does that mean... Will she make that face every time I do something like this? But I can't. No matter what happens, I can't agree. I'm gonna keep doing this even if I'm wrong. If she's really important to me, I'll never apologize to her. I think I hear a sound. I'm not sure when the sun set, but the room's gone dark. The ticking of the clock is getting annoying. Hey, how long are you gonna sleep? I need you to wake up for crying out loud. Huh? I keep saying wake up. It's already past 10 and Ilya won't shut up about how hungry she is. You need to wake up and deal with this. She sounds upset. I snap the full wakefulness. It's past 10. I jump up. Yep, it's 10.17 to be exact. It's way too late for dinner. So Sokka stands over me looking annoyed. Sorry, I fell asleep. I'll be out soon, so wait in the living room. That's fine, but where's Saber? Huh? If she's not here, I guess the dojo was the living room? Shiro, I'm asking because she's not here. Sosaka is serious, and I instantly realize what that means. Don't tell me. She hasn't come back yet? Shira, what do you mean she hasn't come back yet? So Sokka runs out of the room after me. There's no time to explain. I ignore Tosaka's yelling behind me and I rush outside. The town is quiet. Just like yesterday, there's absolutely nobody around. I don't have the patience to think about how odd that is. Saber hasn't come home yet. I actually don't blame her. We had a huge argument. She said she was gonna fight alone. Knowing her, she'd do it too. Saber's nowhere to be found. If I can't find her, that might mean she's actually fighting Lancer, the final servant as we speak. But I head straight to one more place. The air near the river is cold. The night is chilly. And when I passed the park, it was so cold. The entire place felt like it was covered in frost. My cheeks and ears sting with the cold. And my breath mist white. If, if it's that cold in the park, I can't imagine how absolutely freezing it's going to be up on that bridge with the wind blowing up from the river. There I see her. She's right where she'd been standing when I ran away. 
Saber leans on the rail and just gazes out over the water. Maybe she's following the sun, which is long set. She's staring off into the distance, her eyes fixed on a red horizon that's long since vanished. And that's when I realize Saber is strong, but she's weak too. Her dignified appearance is just her way of trying to prove that she can get by without anyone's help. But at the same time, she's so fragile, she might slip through my fingers if I reach for her. She can't do things alone, but she'll probably keep up that front until the very end. So, just like me, she's been staring up at the unreachable stars. All she does is look at the settling sun, as if it's all she knows how to do. I can't leave her alone. If our argument needs a loser, then it's unquestionably me. It's led me to swearing never to make her, never to let her make that face again. I step out onto the bridge. Saber doesn't seem to hear my footsteps. I approach without a word and lean on the rail next to Saber. Saber, Saber you're gonna catch a cold out here. She jumps in surprise. Saber finally notices me. Shiro. Shiro. She turns toward me. What are you doing out here at this hour? You didn't come home, so Sokka was worried. I see. I feel bad about that. It's fine. But why are you here? Well, it was easy to find you since you stayed in the same place. Yes. I'm still here because I have not yet decided where to go. You told me to do whatever I wanted to do. So I've been trying to think of what I want to do. But I cannot think of what I should go, wh what I should do, or where I wish to go. So I've been trying to determine where to go. She sounds like a lost child. Sebe doesn't look at me in the eyes as she speaks. Maybe she feels guilty. Maybe she does after the fight we had. I can't blame her for thinking I must be angry. I am sorry. Please tell Ren I am in her debt. I will return to you once I have defeated Lancer and obtained the Holy Grail. So until then, is she saying she intended to wander around alone without anywhere to go home to? That idiot. What are you talking about? You have my place to come home to. There's food in the bed for you there. But you said that you do not care what I do any longer. Yeah, I have no idea what you're going to do next. I say that. And then I take her hand. Let's go home. You being a servant doesn't mean you won't catch a cold if you stay out here in the cold for so long. Come on, let's get home and eat something warm. And I'm gonna say this, but I'm not going to apologize. If you have any complaints, tell me now. I'm crude about it, but I try to avoid her gaze. She stares at me confused. Sabre looks like she wants to apologize, but I ignore her. Maybe that works in my favor. She doesn't say anything. She just follows me in silence, holding my hand. We head across the bridge and into the park. It's 11 o'clock. There's nobody in the park, but it's packed with plenty of decorations, like fountains and street lights. I walk briskly. Saber's steps are sluggish. She stood on that bridge for more than five hours. She must be freezing and tired. When I tug on her hand, she occasionally stumbles like she's about to fall down. Saber, do you want me to walk slower? You don't seem well. I turn toward her as I speak. No, I am fine. But well, not that Rin's words matter to me. But having you hold my hand like this really does make me think we are on some sort of trice. Huh? And just like that, my face turns bright, hot red. I guess, should I let your hand go? Um, that is, if you don't like it. No, this is fine. Your hand is very warm and comforting. And there our conversation ends. I resume heading home, just to cover my embarrassment. Saber follows in silence. 
I'm not even sure how much farther it is to the house. A little embarrassed by the warmth of our clasped hands, we both leave the park. A lot's happened today. But if we're ending the day with warmth like this, hell, I'll change religions and thank that priest who, indirect as he may be, allowed this moment to happen. Of course, the second I think that. Where are you going? Boy, do you do you think boy, do not think to take what is mine. We run into someone we never should have. I knew this bullshit was gonna fucking happen. Man, fuck this pussy ass nigga. Fucking hate this fucking blonde haired, oh golden girl looking ass nigga. The elation I felt vanishes and my mind goes blank. Goosebumps cover my body and I realize I've forgotten how to breathe. Saber standing behind me probably feels the same. She grips my hand tightly in her own. The same way I feel a sense of impending death. Saber feels the inevitable despair. Your wait is over, Saber. As promised, I've come to claim you. The man in gold. The unidentified heroic spirit who annihilated Caster's bone soldiers and even took out Caster with barely any effort. Now that monster stands in front of us. He's so close. We're at exactly the right distance to begin clashing at each other at any moment. Death looms right in front of us, even more than when we face Berserker. What's wrong, Saber? I've come all this way to get you. You know it's improper to simply remain quiet. Or do you intend to play a bit before you admit you are mine, my King of Knights? Archer stifles a laugh. He's not even looking at me. Saber is his only focus. He admires her like she's a piece of art. Saber's demeanor changes. She must have made up her mind. She's already determined the man in front of us is an enemy, while I've hardly moved a muscle. Shiro, I will do everything I can to block his first attack. Please, take that opportunity to retreat. I know it will be difficult, but I can only do, I can only, I can only do so much against a servant like him. I hear the apology in her voice for not being able to do more. Even someone as powerful as Saber can only block his first attack. My chances of getting away from this guy are slim at best. Saber's asking me to forgive her for what is about to happen. She... She probably knows there's no way for her to defeat the man in gold. I can't let her do that. This is different than when we fought Berserker. I know, though I don't have proof, that making Saber fight this servant can only end badly. Actually, I do have proof. I know from seeing his noble phantasm last night. Saber can't beat him right now. This is not a matter of her skills as a knight. This is not even the, that's not even the right way to look at this. No heroic spirit, so long as they remain a heroic spirit, can beat the man in gold. No, you're the one who's gonna run, Saber. What, Shiro? I cover Saber as I face Archer. Oh, I see you have a master. His shabby appearance led me to think he was no more than a lowly dog. He smiles cheerfully. He raises an arm and lazily snaps his fingers. I feel sick. I need to leave right now or I'm dead. There's no rhyme or reason. I just know instinctively that this guy will kill me for standing in front of him like this. Go, Saber! We're near the church. The priest there should be able to shelter you, even from him. Shiro, are you... Is this smart? I don't think this is smart, Shiro. I push Saber away and start running, trying to escape the death I can only hope isn't, isn't inevitable. There's no plan here. I'm just gonna risk it all and run straight at this guy. Then I'm gonna project Saber's sword again, just like when we fought Berserker. That might not work. Yeah, I kind of figured this. I'm blown back. What just happened? The moment he snapped his finger, something appeared right beside me. Ow! It's a giant hammer. It knocks me aside like a piece of trash and I slam hard into the ground. I can't move. My body is completely useless, like all my bonds have, bones have turned to jelly. 
I've lost all sensation in my limbs. The pain is so dull. I can't even tell if I'm still alive. I will not kill you. If I destroy you now, Saber will disappear. As much as I hate to, I will keep you alive until the Holy Grail is summoned. The man laughs. I try to push myself up, but my body won't listen. But do not let it go to your head, Mongrel. There are ways to allow a server to remain in this world without you. This is just the path of least resistance. If you make so much as another peep, though, I will kill you. And then my mind goes blank. He will kill me. If I make even a single move, he will do just what he said he would. I can't possibly move after that kind of warning. Saber tries to run toward me. Where do you think you're going? There are no more obstacles between us. It is not this piece of trash you should be running to. The man in gold won't allow it. He stands in front of me and waits for Saber to reach me. Saber stops and glares at him. The two stand about 10 meters apart. I don't know about Archer, but Saber can close that distance in a heartbeat. Seems you're not willing to come to me yet. I can't fathom why. So great a heroic spirit as you should realize what a singular honor it is to be chosen by me. What drivel. Even if I become a heroic spirit, I am still king. I will never submit to you. Oh. A king you may be, but you are still a woman. A woman's greatest happiness is to bow before her lord, to serve and devote herself to him. Why then would you ever refuse to do so? Surely you are not so naive a maiden that you are that you are afraid to be my woman, are you? Why you? Don't be so angry. I do not only take. I will return to you equal joy. When you are mine, I will give you everything in the world. You should be honored, for I have deemed you worthy. The man moves. He extends both arms and approaches Saber as if in a welcoming embrace. Yes, you need never become a guardian nor return to your fated death. I will say this only once more, Saber, except that you are mine. Let us enjoy our second lives here, together. I refuse. I have no interest in such things. More importantly, I could never, ever live alongside you, no matter what may happen. Saber looks straight at Archer as she speaks. She stands firm, not taking so much as a step back. <laughs> His laughter suddenly stops. I'm not sure what he found so funny in the first place. Good, good. That's a spunk I expect from a woman I choose. Yes. It might be amusing to have at least one who wasn't so obedient. All right, by force then. Once I've obtained the whole, once I've obtained the Grail, I'll pour its contents all over you. Rejoice, Saber. Once I've done that, you won't need a master. You will be taking in all the power of the omnipotent vessel, the Holy Grail. You will no longer have to live as a servant, serving humans as their familiar. He's so damn smug. To that, Archer. What are your intentions? She must have realized that the only option is to fight him. And before she engages with the enemy, she wants to know why he does what he does. My intentions. I've forgotten. Unfortunately for me, I possess all the world's riches. There's nothing else, uh, there's nothing left for me to wish for. What? You do not seek the Holy Grail? The Holy Grail? Oh, you mean immortality. <laughs> I gave that to a snake. You gave immortality to a snake? Saber freezes. What just happened? Saber sh subtly shakes her head to refute those words. But this world is certainly amusing. The basic principles remain the same. The adornments are so elaborate now though. Maybe ruling the world once again wouldn't be so bad. Yes, I suppose, I suppose you could say that is my intent. And if it allows me to accomplish that faster, the Holy Grail's power may not be so useless. The desire to dominate. 
You have fallen from grace, Archer. I did not think that is what would drive you to seek the Holy Grail. It is not a matter of my desiring it. All the world's riches belong to me. I can't abide others making use of what's mine. You would hate for another to use your sacred sword, wouldn't you, King of Knights? Pale Miss Shroud Saber. Then in a flash, she's wearing her brilliant silver armor. Ah, he doesn't move a muscle. In the next instant, Saber dashes forward. In the, in the space of a single breath, she rushes straight at the man and swings her invisible sword at him with deadly speed. Saber goes flying backwards. If Saber's armor materialized by magical energy, Archer's must be the same. In the brief space of their rapid exchange, the man in gold arms himself. Saber looks calmly at Archer as she readies her sword. Even as his eyes meet hers, his sneer remains. Very well. I will allow you to oppose me, Saber. The enemy happily announces that the, the beginning of the battle. A white light bursts in the air between them. Saber's sword shrouded in a bolt of lightning, cleaves directly toward the Golden Knight. One, two, three, four strikes! Each time Saber's sword strikes, blinding light flashes from the contact. Watching her repeated attack is like staring at a strobe light. It's just like when I first saw Saber, the night when she fought Lancer. Saber channels her excess magical energy into her sword and strikes with such speed and precision that she all but becomes a lightning bolt. The clang of swords against armor echoes through the air. Archer hasn't even drawn his weapon yet, as Saber's sword strikes at him. He barely manages to defend his head with both hands. He simply doesn't have the skill to block Saber's attacks. Saber's skill with the sword is vastly superior to his. On top of that, her sword is invisible. Even if Archer draws his weapon, he won't be able to defend against that invisible blade. It strikes her armor relentlessly. The sword hits the armor, chipping away at it and sending sparks showering in all directions. The only thing a man can do is ward Saber's blows from his face with his hands. This isn't a fight, it's a massacre. But, in spite of the fury of Saber's attacks, Archer's armor remains intact. If he's still unscathed even after such a savage assault, that golden armor must be his noble phantasm. I suppose I can't allow this to continue. You certainly do have a limitless supply of magical energy. It's not often an attack can make my armor begin to creak. Archer raises his arm, but not towards Saber. I have no idea what he's trying to do, but Archer just stretches his arm up into the empty night sky. Enough playing around. Offer your body to me right now. Am I hallucinating? Is this an illusion? He has something in his hand. It's a short sword shaped like a key. Saber plants both feet, unleashing a much more powerful attack against Archer, but... Archer bats it aside with his dark red sword. Is that a noble phantasm imbued with the curse of vengeance? Saber puts some distance between herself and Archer, glaring at his sword. The enemy wielding such a weapon is a threat, no question. But it also means he's showing his hand. Whether his noble phantasm is armor or a sword, we'll be able to figure out how to deal with it as long as we can see it. Saber readjusts her stance. Archer's already said his armor is at his limit. If Saber can go back on the offensive with the same fury as before, she should be able to cut through his armor. Even if he pulls out his noble phantasm now, the next blow will decide the match. This is the end. Let us conclude our match that was interrupted at that time ago, Archer. The sword in her hand is still invisible. She readies her sacred sword, still bound up in swirling wind, and faces her enemy. Saber seems to know what that noble phantasm is. She puts that distance between them because she knows how to deal with it. 
she's readying herself to face Archer directly. Each of them wields a sword, and if their powers are equal, then it is a matter of the wielder's skill. And that should mean Saber will win. Very well. Come at me, Saber. In recognition of that sword of yours, I shall show you everything I have. The man laughs. Saber charges without hesitation. Her sword will cleave through his armor. The very instant I think that. An invisible door opens behind the man. Saber jerks to one side. Archer holds something else in his hands now. Not the black and red sword. It's an invisible sword like Saber's. By the time Saber deflects it, Archer already has a different sword. His sword strikes at her in a merciless rain of ice shards. Saber twists away to dodge, but the air around her becomes almost solid with flying blades. She's driven back as the blades close in on her from all sides. As the shards clinging to Saber vanish, her enemy holds a deadly looking weapon that resembles the Grim Reaper's scythe. Saber blocks the weapon, ar arcing for her neck with a gauntlet, but it's useless. The scythe shears through her gauntlet like it was made of tissue paper and begins to drain her magical energy. It's as if it's trying to pull out her bones rather than her blood or flesh. <laughs> Saber stumbles, but she manages to keep it together. But her retreat takes on a different note. She's not distancing herself to prepare for her attack. She's desperately fleeing the enemy. <laughs> that can't be. Saber glares at Archer as she passes magical energy through her numbed arm. A halo of hilt sur floats around Archer. Those are the swords that slaughter Caster. His noble phantasm now is backing Saber into a corner. Even I, looking on from a distance, can't believe what I'm seeing. All those hilts floating behind him are definitely his noble phantasm. Not 10, not 20. I can't even, I can't see them all, but I can tell there's no end to them. They're all from different times and places. The servant has all the divine mysteries that have ever been mentioned in various legends and lore. Archer, who are you? Saber's voice trembles. No servant would ever reveal their true name just because someone asks. But Archer's noble phantasm is so bizarre, Saber couldn't help but ask. Answer me, Archer! A heroic spirit should only have one noble phantasm. Some may have multiple, but two is usually the limit. A heroic spirit with an endless supply of noble phantasms like you should not exist. Should not exist. Now, Saber, do not rush to judgment. Heroic spirits make the weapons they use during their life in the noble phantasm. So it's quite simple. All these noble phantasms are things I collected while I was alive. Are you mocking me, Archer? That is even more absurd. No matter who you are, there is no way you can carry the noble phantasm unique to other heroic spirits. No such heroic spirit exists. Saber's right. All the noble phantasms he has are real. There are demonic swords from Northern Europe and even South America. No hero ever made a name for themselves in so many regions. Besides, Lancer should be the only one with gay bowl. Heroic spirits have their favorite weapon they use during their life as their noble phantasm. Based on that rule, the only one who could have had gay bog is Ku is Ku Kulain. But Archer isn't Ku Kulain. And that means his spear can't be gay bog. But the thing is, it definitely is the real gay bog. If those noble phantasms are all fake, that would explain it, but they're real. So that's just no, wait, could they all be originals? The weapon's prototypes? That seems impossible, but then again, it might be possible. Legend and myth don't spring up from nothing. Plenty of myths share commonalities because someone or something served as a model for them. Legends, which get to the point of becoming the basis of worship, usually only take root in the lands where they are said to take place. 
That's one of the reasons demonic swords and sacred swords reveal their true identities in the land they come from. So let's say this is something from before even that. What if various noble phantasms and mythology existed before they were known and named? Ah, your mask is not entirely useless. He seems to have a notion of who I am. Saber turns to face me. She's so far away. I can't help her from so far away. I've finally gotten to the point where I can move, even if it's still difficult. Run, Saber! His noble phantasms are... You're saying they're all real, right? Indeed. It really is simple, Saber. Let me tell you of the earliest days of Earth, when the world was still one. The single nation prospered, and its, collect collect and its king collected so many, many treasures. Until there was nothing left for him to collect. He lacked nothing. He possessed the perfect treasury, but he never used the weapons within it. The king carried them with him into his internal slumber. That's all there is to it. After the king's death, the contents of the treasury were scattered around the world. Each was valued for being a truly exceptional weapon. So when the time they so in time they came to be treated as noble phantasms. Do you understand now, King of Knights? The noble phantasms you servants use, they're nothing more than the king's you then they're nothing more than the king's own possessions. It's like an inheritance. As long as you trace an object's history, a base or prototype will always exist. It only makes sense that every legend, myth, or noble phantasm passed down in each country has an original. Far enough back into the past, if one person collected all those prototypes, they could possess every noble phantasm. And that could only be one hero. A hero from the oldest of legends, far older than the legend of King Arthur or Hercules, the tyrant who ruled ancient Mesopotamia, a king who was half god, half human, who collected all the world's treasures, and who eventually sought eternal youth. Gilgamesh, the most ancient king of heroes. Saber sounds like he's trying to keep the fear from her voice. Gilgamesh relishes her reaction. Indeed, I am the strongest heroic spirit, and should you fight me, you will find you are no match for me. There's nothing else to discuss. All that's left now is for him to use his endless noble phantasms to annihilate his enemy. Oh, even knowing my name you still intend to oppose me? You must understand that you can't possibly win. I will know nothing of the sort until I try. You may be the king of heroes, but there is something that even you cannot surpass. The air around Saber wavers. The wind envelops her as it picks up, becoming a whirlwind to protect her. As it does, her golden sword is revealed. No, Saber! I don't believe this. Does Saber intend to use Excalibur? Gilgamesh stops, looking ugly as fuck, by the way. Oh my goodness, this nigga's ugly. He must know how powerful Saber's sacred sword is, because his self-assured composure falters. Saber glances toward me briefly, but her focus is on Gilgamesh now. She telling me to run away while I have the opportunity? Gilgamesh's back is to the river, while Saber is over here with me. The positioning must be the result of our, of our sh shuffling around earlier. Before I realize what's happening, Saber is facing Gilgamesh, protecting me. No, you can't, not here. I try to force myself to move, and with all the strength I can muster in my numb body, all I can manage is lifting a single arm. I use every bit of magical energy in my body to use that arm to push myself up. Come on! I've lost all sensation, but every bone in my body creaks as I begin moving. The pain is a warning. My body is coming apart at the seams, and if I move, that'll be it. I push myself to my feet, ignoring the warning. I try to enjoy the pain. 
I don't have time for this shit. What I need to do is get to my feet as fast as I can and protect Saber. I have a really, really bad feeling about this. It's, it's the same premonition I felt when I faced Gilgamesh myself. We can't beat him no matter what. My instincts keep telling me that I just can't let Saber fight him. The famed Sacred Sword. Very well. The swirling wind has become a raging vortex. Even in the face of that dazzling sword, Gilgamesh is unintimidated. On top of that, I suppose I should select a weapon well suited for it. He draws a strange sword from the gate behind him. That's where my premonition came from. The sword he has now doesn't exist in any legend. I can identify every one of the noble phantasms floating behind him, but I have no idea about that sword. I possess all the originals of the noble phantasms, but they are all nameless. They are also not the only weapons I possess. The sword itself is cylindrical. It consists of three segments, each rotating in different directions. It looks like a drill capable of piercing solid bedrock. This is different though. Only the king of heroes may wield this sword. It has no name. So I simply call it Ea. So all you wanted to compare the strength of our noble phantasms? Light flashes off their weapons. The two of them are still about 10 meters apart. Gilgamesh can't possibly attack her, avoid her attacks from, this di from that distance. Yes, there's no need to hold back now. I always wanted to go up against a sword they say is the strongest. His laughter echoes in the space between them. Tabor must have taken that as provocation. Very well. Then defend yourself against my sword if you can! Saber moves. Her lips form the sword's true name. There's nowhere to run now. The noble phantasm, released when its wielder speaks its name, strikes mercilessly at Gilgamesh. It's time. Awaken, Aya. A cylindrical sword roars. In response to Gilgamesh's words, the three segments whirl faster. If Saber's Excalibur summons a whirlwind by driving the wind away, Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh's Aya creates a gale by drawing the wind in. But Saber is more experienced with handling her anti-fortress noble phantasm. It's faster than Aya. Saber pours as much magical energy as she possibly can into her weapon in seconds, igniting its massive power. She doesn't hesitate. Saber unleashes the might of a sacred sword so powerful it could split a river in two. At the same moment, A light of magic intensity flares to meet Excalibur's attack. The impact is tremendous. Raging winds tear trees from the ground. The colliding lights are like an exploding sun blinding me. No, I... I'm on the verge of being carried off by the wind. I cling to the ground with my one functioning arm. It's all I can do to weather the storm. Weather the storm of wind, light, and heat. How long will this go on? Their overwhelming attacks are so powerful, I fear they might split the world in two. But then... It suddenly ends with Saber surrounded by white light. A crash breaks the unexpected silence. Something thuds into the ground beside me. 
Saber. I know what it is. Even half blind, I couldn't mistake what I'm seeing. She looks dead. She's a bloody mess. <laughs> In the distance, the golden knight, completely unscathed, laughs like a madman. <laughs> so is that all the power humanity's strongest sacred sword can muster? Human power is truly pathetic. His laughter rises so high it seems to soar up into the heavens. This must be hilarious to him. He's just smiling to himself, not even paying Saber any mind now that she's fallen. Saber. She doesn't answer. Blood spurts from her mouth as she tries to gasp. The world goes red. What was I doing? I knew this would happen. I knew Saber couldn't win against Gilgamesh. Why didn't I try to stop her? Even if I had to use a command spell. What a bore. Not even a challenge. I'm disappointed you were so easily defeated, Saber. Ah, uh, my mistake. I should have gotten easy on you. You are just a woman after all. His smug voice is pissing me off. It's my fault. I thought she could win. As bad a feeling as I had about this, I was sure Excalibur would win. I may have told her to stop, but my command spell didn't react. I obviously wasn't serious. If I'd been serious about protecting her, I could have used a command spell to make her escape even if it was just her, and there would have been at least been options for me to fight on my own. So it's time for me to collect what's mine. It's gotten a little dirty, but no matter. He was gonna end up that way anyway. A scratch here or there makes no difference. His voice draws closer. Saber must have come too. I see her eyes open. Saber, are you all right? I can see her breathing. Yet I'm still far away enough that I can't reach her. She lays still, but I can't run to her. All I can do is call out to her. Saber's mouth opens. She breathes in as if to ask for help, but even that is painful enough to send her into a coughing fit. Shiro, are you there? Her voice is weak, and the question makes clear she can't see me. Hold on, ow. I can't very well say I'll help. I'm on the ground too, I can only move one arm. I can't even offer words of encouragement. At least she can't see me in this pathetic state. Oh, I see. I must have lost. She tilts her head toward me, her eyes lifeless. I am sorry. Please escape, even if you must do so alone, master. Saber coughs up blood. Anger seizes me and I see red. I've been relying on Saber and this is the result. I took one hit and I can't even get up. I grab my head with the one hand that still works. I could just about kill myself. I have every intention of crushing my head, and so I pour all the strength I can into my hand. The switch fails. Instead of using a, my finger, I imagine a hammer to press the switch to change myself into a mage. Don't ever use it again. Projection is beyond your abilities. I hear Tosaka's voice. She said that trying to do magecraft beyond your abilities would destroy the caster's nerves and magic circuits. So fucking what? Saber's more important than any of that bullshit. If I can't protect her, I don't need my head anyway. She saved me so many times. I've never cared about someone the way I care about her. So, if I can't protect her, I'm better off dead. I hear the pounding of iron. The shattered bones on my body are being reinforced by magical energy. There's no holding back. I throw my switch wide open, 
ignoring my own limits, I generate as much magical energy as I can. My spine ignites and my entire body grows red hot. My brain feels like it's melting and I bite my tongue to enjoy it. My teeth sink into the fleshy muscle. If I have to bite a hole in my tongue to remain conscious, so be it. What? The footsteps stop. Gilgamesh's amused laughter stops with them. What are you doing? You mustn't or your body will. She must sense something, even without being able to see. Saber screams as she desperately try des as she tries desperately to push herself up. Something in me snaps. I stand up. My body tries to ignore my orders, but it begins to move with the help of the surge of magical energy I pour into it. It's like being set on fire and, and instinctively running toward water in hopes of surviving. I don't care. It's better than seeing Saber like that. All right. With my mind barely nearly burning up, I finally realize, from the beginning, I vowed to wield my sword because I didn't want her to get hurt. What? I told you to flee, so why? I stopped the enemy from approaching. Saber's behind me on the ground. This is it. There's no way I can retreat now. I restrain my panicking, burning body and focus my will. I need to imagine one single thing. I divide the projection into eight sections and replicate the lost sword. There's something solid in my left hand. I don't even have to look. My second attempt at manufacturing the sword succeeds. My sword. No, that is not right. You should know very well that we still cannot win against him. If you can move, you have to run. I'm not running. I came here to get you. No way am I going home alone. I ready the sword. I hold it in both hands. It's much heavier than the bamboo sword and I, and I glare at Gilgamesh. No! Stop, Shiro! He is... I ignore Saber's words and take a step forward. There's about four meters between us. If I rush on him with all my might, I, maybe I can cut him down. He doesn't move. Gilgamesh watches me for a moment and laughs. I suppose I'll kill you then. His voice is utterly devoid of emotion. I instinctively block the attack that comes my way. Why you? I dodge the surprise attack by swaying sideways. Too slow. If the first attack is a sudden gust, the barrage of attack that follows is like a storm. Blocking is all I can do. Actually, I wouldn't have been able to block the first attack on my own. Fortunately, when I reproduce a sword, I also reproduce its memory. A sword that's been in so many battles gains the will of its own after all that experience. This sword must have already mastered this particular dance. I can't follow Gilgamesh's attacks, but the sword seems to be able to. Before I move my arm, the sword is already reacting to Gilgamesh's attacks. I let the sword guide me and manage to parry Gilgamesh's fierce attack. It doesn't last long. Every time I swing the sword, my fingers go numb, and I find myself gradually lagging more and more behind the sword's guidance. You mongrel. This is beyond unseemly. Gilgamesh must not be able to tolerate even the slightest bit of resistance from me. He glares hatefully at me as he backs up just the slightest bit. I'm saved. If he'd kept attacking, I wouldn't have lasted a second longer. I try to catch my breath, and then... You filthy faker! If you are so enamored by it, I will show you the real thing! He draws a sword. It looks familiar. The decorations are different though. The thought that went into making that sword as well as its soul 
are too similar to this sword. Don't tell me. The prototype of this sword. That's right. But its precision as a noble phantasm is without equal. The sword and the stone you hold now originated with, Nor with the Norse legend of the sword impaled in the tree of supremacy. And this, this sword is a prototype for both. This sword serves as the very foundation of the concept of the divine right of kings. Is he saying he's, hold he's holding the original model for the sword and the tree of supremacy? The Norse god, the Norse hero Sigmund's demonic sword, Graham? No child surpasses their parents. Replicas deteriorate with each iteration, and are no match for the original. Light flares from the blade. The sword understands perfectly that this is the same attack which killed Berserker in a single strike. It must be protecting its owner. The sword in my hands moves toward the enemy's sword more fiercely, more powerfully than ever before. The noble phantasm called Caliburn, the golden sword of assured victory. But it shatters instantly in the face of Merodach, the original sin. I hear something sliding along the ground. It's a faint rustling sound. Is the park's ground slippery? I roll across the ground like a bit of trash in the wind before finally coming to a stop. Her voice tells me I'm still alive. Oh, there you are, Saber. I'm relieved to see that. I thought I'd been blown away, but it doesn't matter since Saber's here. And then, as long as I can stand up, I can run to her. I glance at my arm. It's red. My arm is covered in some sort of sticky red membrane, but there's no blood coming from me. Do not move! Please! Please do not move, Shiro! Saber shouts reach me as I lay there, staring at my arm. It looks like my, it looks like my torso is what's hurt. That single attack. I'm pretty sure Gilgamesh's sword is what sent me flying. That at least explains why I'm injured. No wonder Saber's so upset. The only thing I can do is move my right hand. My left hand doesn't move. I'm not even sure what happened to my left hand. I can't even breathe. A diagonal slash covers my torso, starting at my left shoulder. The slash runs all the way through my body, separating parts of me like mismatched building blocks. Or like a giant ginkgo leaf. I've been cut open from shoulder to hip. It's actually creepy I'm still alive right now. I don't think this miraculous survival is going to last long. I'm conscious right now, but my vision is starting is already starting to narrow. Besides, even a tiny movement will send all my organs tumbling out of my torso. Maybe I really am dead and my consciousness or my ghost or something is just hanging around watching what's unfolding. <laughs> I thought that attack would leave you scattered all over the place. But you are nothing if tenacious, hmm. I suppose clinging desperately to life is the only good quality a mongrel possesses. He laughs. I'm grateful for it, honestly. The more horribly grating that laughter is, the more my consciousness fights to cling to my physical body. But it all ends here. You are unworthy of a lion. She will be mine. More footsteps. This time he's gonna take Saber for sure. What? I stand up! Excuse me? I stand up! The fuck? You thought I was just gonna lay down and let this shit happen? Nigga, fuck this gold hair bitch ass nigga. I stand the fuck up. I pour all the strength I have into my one good arm. I try to grip the ground with my sticky, slippery arm and lever myself upright, even as I'm on the verge of literally splitting apart. For a brief second, I see Saber's face. She's on the brink of tears. In that moment, I'm proud to know falling in love with her wasn't a mistake. Hold it. It's not over yet! I force myself up. Neither of my legs work. The magical energy that barely kept my body moving is gone. All that remains is my faint heartbeat and the throbbing of my organs trying desperately to continue functioning. 
feeling regret, are we? I can barely, I can hardly blame you. But that treasure is beyond you. I can hardly blame you for wanting to take it for yourself. That must make it all the more painful to see it in the hands of another man. Too far. He goes too far. I can't listen to another second of his fucking bullshit. Enough. Quit talking about Saber like she's some thing to be claimed. I'll pour what energy I can into my right arm. It feels like it's made of lead. My body creaks in protest, but begins to obey. I push myself up to one knee. Damn! Listen to me! I take a deep breath, trying to focus what strength I have left. Every time I move, I feel my organs shifting around as if with minds of their own. Why? Why do you not understand that it is pointless? Saber sounds like she's denouncing me. She's far away. In the distance, I can see her staring at me, sad and forlorn. I push everything from my mind to focus on making my body move. Saber's voice is just a distraction. Yoga meshes laughter, the pathetic state my body's in. None of that is my biggest obstacle right now. Right now, it's Saber. Hearing her say that, hearing her looking like, like that, it's almost enough to make me give up. Finally, I feel life flood into my knees. Now all I have to do is get to my feet. I do not need it. I do not need your help. I have lost and so I am no longer your sword. It, it is only proper for me to disappear now. It's Saber's voice. Damn. If you keep saying that, if you keep making this even harder, I'll get mad, even at you. No, please, Shiro. You cannot keep going, really. You will die. If you die this way, this way, I... I can't keep listening to this. She has no idea how I feel. Shut the fuck up! Just be quiet for a minute. There's nothing wrong with relying on me at times like this. That is wrong, Shiro. Please do not twist your priorities so. You should not concern yourself with me. You must put your life ahead of mine. She's pleading with me. Knowing that I'm responsible for the agonized sound of her voice makes me want to want to, want to give up right now. But I refuse. There's nothing in this world I want more than you. I can't allow myself to give in to her plea. Saber gapes at me. I'm not sure why. But I remember something. She once told me I was a fool who didn't know the value of my own life. I think she's right. For someone who can't help themselves, to try to help someone else is a little presumptuous. They're really only doing it for their own happiness, while the person they're meant to be helping may not be half so pleased. Someone's first priority should be themselves. The people who think like that are the ones who can be truly happy, and so they can then share that happiness with other people as well. Yeah, I know I'm a fool who doesn't value his own life. I've been wrong about the most important thing in my life. From this day, the place in my heart where, wherever, where whatever is most important to me should have been empty, should have been was empty. But I'm grateful for that abnormality because now that empty space is filled with the person I truly want to save. But Saber, even if I'm the most important thing in my life, Nothing will change. You are so much more beautiful than my life could ever be. Nothing could ever replace you in my heart. And then I realized, it wasn't that I was sympathetic towards her. The girl in my dreams. The girl who fought and died alone. Who I felt was never rewarded for all she did. I was in awe of her. I thought she was beautiful beyond words. The vivid image of her taking her sword and charging into battle never looking back, was awe-inspiring. Yeah, that's why. That's why I need to protect you, Saber. You were alone your entire life, so I have to make sure you're not swallowed up by the darkness in your last moments. Yeah, once this is all over, on the verge of your death, hope you can go into your eternal slumber 
proud of what you did with your life. No more hesitation. My objective is clear. Sorry. I love you more than anything, Saber. So I'm not letting him take you. I regret the apology as soon as I give it, but I wanted to tell her. I wanted to tell her that now of all times, because the words could come straight from my heart. I sense her gasping. I want to turn around to see her face, but no. I can't really see anymore anyway. I stand up. As long as my heart is still beating, I can keep fighting. Magical energy is life. As long as it flows through me, I can create as many swords for her as she needs. Congratulations. You've stood up. Now what? What do you expect to happen here? I feel a scorching heat in my right hand. Here on the brink of death, I'm reminded of what happened 10 years ago. The terrible illusion. I feel just like I did when I was in the fire, reaching a hand out and hoping to be saved. Every time like I feel tears coming because of just how emotional this is, like just something breaks me out of it. I legit was about to start fucking crying right now. And then this bitch ass nigga had to fuck up my emotional state. Go away. I can't leave Saber to you. I say that as I raise my right hand. Fool. I have no need for your consent. Gilgamesh raises his sword. Get down, Shiro. I hear Saber far behind me. I ignore her and use the last of my remaining magical energy to protect, project the sword once more. The light stops me. A vortex of light rushes at me. It's not as strong as Excalibur, but it still burns away everything it, anything it touches. When the heat scorches my body, I don't think about my death. I think about Saber somewhere behind me. This will kill her as well as me. I at least need to protect her then. I say that's what I do. It's what I've always wanted to do. Saber's strong, but at the same time, could break at any moment. She needs me. She's like a drawn sword. So to make sure she doesn't get hurt, I'll sheathe her. And then, before I realize what's going on, there's a sword in my right hand. He materialized the sheath of immortality. I'm not sure who said that, but there's a brief hesitation. At the same time, the invincible knight in gold takes a step backward. Shiro, allow me! Saber takes my hand. The vortex of light fades. Saber's right beside me. Before me is Gilgamesh, eyes open and bleeding. I don't know what happened. But I realize it's just like the Berserker battle. Saber is using whatever I made, and it destroyed Gilgamesh's gram. Two titanic beams of light collide before one overwhelms the other, and we managed to truly wound the man who, until now, had been completely unscathed. He radiates murderous intent. It is terrifying. In spite of that ferocious, murderous rage, the Golden Knight leaves without a word. But there's no time to be surprised. I have no idea why it just left. But even as I feel myself slipping into unconsciousness, I know the battle's over. My knees buckle. The tension that kept me upright fades and I collapse. Saber hurries forward and catches me. While I slip onto my rear, supported by Saber, I look over my body. I can't help but cry out. My body is torn to pieces. I should have been killed the instant Gilgamesh laid me open from shoulder to hip. <sighs> well, this is definitely... My healing power must be what got me clinging to life. But even that has its limits. I'm practically split in two. I can't possibly recover from this. I'm not even sure if I'm breathing and everything's starting to go dark. 
My end is near. The only good thing to come from this is that Saber is okay. My wounds are fatal, but it looks like Saber was just exhausted. She's disarmed and her wounds are already healed. Even if I end up having to drop out of the war, I'm sure Tosaki can take care of the rest. I hear that sound again. The sound of creaking bones is coming from me. Curious, I look down at my wounds. What? I see myriad swords. Or, I see what looks like tons of tiny blades converging, layering atop each other trying to knit together my broken body. I feel faint. Looks like every muscle and bone in my body is made from swords? The next moment they're gone. My body looks normal, and what I thought I saw a moment ago seems to have only been an illusion. As proof of that, my ruined flesh begins fusing together. My wounds close right before my eyes. It's more like restoration rather than healing. Looking at it, I feel a surge of disgust rather than fascination. Looks like I'm gonna make it. But this is just too... What a relief. It appears you will not die, Master. I hear Saber's voice in my ear. She's, uh, really close. Well, that's great, but my body, what? I want to ask what's going on with my body, but I'm suddenly overcome with dizziness. And then, my body is enveloped in a soft embrace. No, I understand now. It makes sense for your wounds to be healing. I can't stay awake. I produce too much magical energy. My worn out mind just wants sleep now. I don't know how strong it is, but Saber moves closer and wraps her arms around me. She embraces me tight. I finally understand. You are my sheath, Shiro. Her words penetrate deep into my tired mind. That sensation is so comforting, and the last of my remaining consciousness fades away. I finally realize I'm safe, and so I yield my body to sleep. Before sleep takes me, I find myself thinking, with a little foolish sadness, that this scene would be better if our positions were reversed. For the final time, I see that red hill once again. The red memory. I dive deeper into her memory and realize I'm seeing it for the last time. It's a memory of a certain night that I've seen many times already. After becoming king and killing her will so that she could devote herself to the will of her nation, her days were now marked by the resentment of her trust in might knights. Every time she won a battle, Altria was made to fight more battles she didn't want. She continued to hide her sex, which heaped more suspicion onto her. All that awaited the isolated girl was rebelling at the hands of her own family. A young knight took over the nation while the king was away on an expedition. That knight's name was Mordred. The knight, son of Altria's older sister, Morgan, was in fact the king of knight's own son. Altria was never able to have a child as a woman, but Mordred had her blood coursing through his veins. I'm not clear what happened to make this possible, but Altria's older sister, Morgan, loathed her for becoming king. Mordred was created as a clone and served the king without knowing who his father was. Mordred seized and sought an opportunity to take the throne for himself, ultimately going so far as to organize a revolt. That revolt would end in what later became known as the Battle of Camelon. The final battle and the end of King Arthur. King Arthur learned of Mordred's betrayal during her exp expedition and returned with her weary army to invade her own lands. She defeated many of the knights who used to serve her. She attacked the lands she once defended. Those few knights who remained loyal to her died, 
The only two left standing in the end were the king and her son, Mordred. The combat between the two of them ended in the king's victory, but the king was not unharmed. Mordred was bound by a powerful curse and swung his sword even after dying, inflicting a fatal wound on the king. And so the battle ended. It was the end of her, the king once known as the King of Knights. It must have been heart-wrenching. None of the battles she fought were painless. Every one of the 12 battles she fought was intense, but this final one was her greatest loss. She returned to her homeland, only to have to destroy her own army. She was forced to punish the knights that, who once served her, and had to watch those knights who remained loyal to her die. And in the end, she had to kill her own son. I have no idea what was going through her head in that moment, but I had to pray. I had to pray for the lone knight who tried to remain king until the very end. I pray that this dream of her just before her death is the, is the kind of dream a girl named Altria would want to see. I opened my eyes. I don't know when I got back, but I'm in my room lying on the futon. Futon. Ah, uh, Shiro, you are awake. Saber. How did I? You have been sleeping for some time. You are mostly here now, healed now, so there is no cause for concern. I see. I guess that's good. But what about Saber? She used Excalibur, so she must be running low on magical energy since she probably healed herself too. Saber, were you taking care of me the whole time? All I did was wipe the sweat from your brow. I cannot treat wounds like Rin. You dummy, he didn't have to do that. You're probably suffering too. That is not true. My wounds were insignificant compared to yours. However, on that subject, though your wounds have healed, they were severe enough that you might have died. You must be mindful of your body and its limits right now. Saber reaches for a basin of water that sits beside her. She draws a towel out from it and wrings it before wiping me off with the cool water. Honestly, what she does mostly just embarrasses me. Does your wound still hurt? Your fever does not seem to have gone down. I, I don't have a fever. Um, that's not what I meant. I want you to rest too. You might be fine right now, but you still use Excalibur. You should be resting, or you might ex you might collapse again like last time. Oh, well, that may be true. But I am better off than you are right now. It is only proper that I should protect my master until his wounds are healed. Well, I, I guess that makes sense. She's got me there. When she says it like that, I can't really do anything but agree. Fine. I'm gonna rest, but I want you to rest too, Saber. I won't be able to sleep knowing you aren't resting. That is true. And I do require sleep. Saber nods in agreement, then rings a the towel and hangs it over the edge of the basin. I do my best to swallow my embarrassment as I watch Saber tend to me. I will go rest. Please, take care, Shiro. Okay. Good night. I forgot to say so earlier, but thank you, Shiro. I am very glad you are okay. There, under the moonlight, I see Saber smile. Her smile seems fragile, maybe because of the pale moonlight. Before I get a good look, the door closes. When Saber disappears into her room, I'm stricken by a sudden sense of relief, or maybe loneliness. I regret not telling her to stay here and just take my foots on while I use my arm as a pillow, but that would be too much for her. Besides, if we did that, it'd remind me of that night. I shake off the image that works its way into my mind. Too many things have happened today. Feels like an entire week has gone. Week has gone by just today. My date with Saber was more challenging than fun. Then we got into an argument and I left, abandoning Saber. And then... No. I shouldn't think of that until I've completely recovered. 
Not only do we have to deal with Gilgamesh, but we also need to defeat Lancer and whoever his master is. We need to rest, recover, and regroup so we can be at our best, or else we don't have a chance at winning. This only happened a few hours ago. I think Saber said something about me being her sheath. At the time, I couldn't ask what she meant. I was a wreck and near to passing out. Oh, come on. I can't fall asleep. And Saber's dream, her face, resolute even on the brink of death, overlaps with the sight of Saber tending to me. I hear a voice saying goodnight. The image of her frail profile and her smile is burned into my mind. It's not a smile I saw in any of my dreams of, of, of her life. She says it makes her happier when she sees me smile. That just drives me nuts. I'm not sad, just exasperated. I don't know why it annoys me so much I actually find myself getting angry. I punch my futon. The desire to lash shot in the face of this frustration just completely overwhelms me. Shira, is something the matter? A concerned voice drifts from the other in from the other side of the closed door. My breathing is heavy, so she must think I'm having trouble sleeping. No, it's okay. But why are you still awake? Are you truly alright? If you are still in pain, I can remain by your side. Maybe I should go over... No, that's even worse. All the pent-up feelings I've been holding back will come rushing to the forefront if I see Saber now. Saber, can I talk to you for a bit? Yes, if you do not mind talking like this. We start talking through the sliding door. Since I can't actually see her, I think back on that smile. The last expression I saw on her face. She looks so happy. And when I think of it, I find myself getting more frustrated rather than less. I don't know why I'm getting so warm. But I still need to talk to Saber. I have to tell her that even if I don't have the right answer, she's wrong. My voice trembles. My tongue feels heavy in my mouth. Once I say it, I won't be able to take it back. I'm fully aware of that. It's okay. It's okay. Just, things are fine, so you need to smile for yourself. Some unknown force forces the words from me. Shiro, what are you... Why? There shouldn't even be a question. I'll just keep repeating myself until you realize it. Saber, you've done enough. You worked hard. You fought so hard all on your own. That's why. It wouldn't be right unless you found your own happiness. You fulfilled your vow. That gives you the right to go back to being Altria. What? You still want to talk about this? Yeah. I'm gonna keep saying it. I can't help it. I fell for you. So you should go back to being you. No, Altria. I suppress a sudden surge of emotion. I'm on the verge of breaking down. If only Saber would just say something, even a single word. Shiro, please do not. If you say that, I... Her answer is unchanged. My heart aches from her determination. You have come into me both physically and spiritually, despite knowing my past. You should know very well what answer I would have to give. So why do you still concern yourself with me? You must have seen all the sins I have committed. Yeah, I have. Many people were sacrificed in the name of the king. Many enemies killed. I have no intention of pretending that didn't happen. Still, knowing this, I want all three to be happy. Yeah, so? I don't understand this feeling, but I can't just let you stay like this. I want you to smile, Saber. I want to be with you forever. Such a childish confession of love. I wait for her answer as the silence stretches out between us. What Saber might be doing, or how she might be reacting behind that closed door, I have no idea. Are my words even getting through to her? My answer will never change. I cannot break the vow I made as king. I may not have been fit to rule, but my nation was still entrusted to me. And since I failed in my duties, I cannot... I cannot accept this freedom. Her voice is so sad. 
I can't stand it any longer. I don't want to hear the solitary oath Altria took when she became king. I already know it. All this frustration wasn't just so I can hear her lamentations. I kick at the futon covers. The only thing between me and Saber is a sliding door leading to her room. The door slides, the door slides softly as I open it. My mind goes blank. What was I so angry about? Why was I so sad? Before me, I see trembling eyes on the verge of tears. I see a slender neck and shoulders so thin they seem in danger of snapping in a breeze. And I see her golden hair splashed with moonlight, just like when we first met. Without even thinking, I'm embracing her. I hold her so tight I might break her. It's different from that night. It didn't, I didn't feel like this back then. This may sound ridiculous. Even though I was aspiring to be a champion of justice, I never fell in love. There was never someone I couldn't let go of. It's like she might disappear if I don't hold her tightly enough. I'm not sure how long I hold her, but I relax my embrace after reminding myself that no, she won't disappear. Shiro, what is this all of a sudden? What is the meaning of this? Even if you do that, I will not... She moves slightly in my arms. Her lips tremble. She's about to say something I don't want to hear. So I place my lips over hers to silence her. She trembles in my arms. I'm looking at Saber, but I'm not seeing anything. But my sense of touch has grown so much more sensitive now. I can feel the softness of Saber's lips. Our lips part. Saber places a hand on my chest and pushes me away gently. That kiss. She wants to say it was a mistake. Saber looks at me on the verge of tears. It wasn't a mistake. I say it as many times as I can. I love you, and I can't let you go. If you don't want that, tell me. Tell me that our relationship is just master and servant. If that's what you really want, then say so directly. Reject me. That is unfair. How can you ask me to do that? Yeah. If you don't tell me directly, I'm not going to hold back. If you don't reject me, I'll just do what I want. Even if it could only make her forget her vow to be king for a moment. Neither of us says anything for what feels like a long time. I keep holding Saber, feeling her soft, slender body. She's still tense, unsure of herself. All I can hear is our breathing and our hearts beating. How many times did our heart beat against each other's? She pushes a little harder on my chest. I cannot reciprocate your feelings. As you cannot change, so are there things I cannot change about myself. If anything, if it is allowed, it would be... The pause makes my heart ache. She bites her lip trembling, as if confessing what we did that night was not permitted. And yet, her body offers no resistance, and the hesitation in her eyes tells me something. Just one night, she's telling me of a hope she feels cannot be fulfilled. She wants to stay like this until the night ends. Saber, I... I lift my hand trying to embrace her. Saber takes hold of it. I... Since I use my noble phantasm, if I do not receive energy from you, I cannot continue fighting. Her hushed voice asking for permission falls silent. I have no words. That line of reasoning is so, so transparent. But it's the best she could do to ask for her wish to come true. Alright. But, do you know if the connection's still working properly? Yes. You are supplying me with energy as we speak. Which is why, to recover more, to fully recover, we should... Our bodies have to be close. It's all we can do. This is as close as we can be. Because she's still bound by her oath. I can't break that oath. Sabra moves in my arms. 
I don't know what to do with the heat of her pressed against me. Holding Saber's slender body in my arms makes my heart beat faster, and I'm ashamed of myself for getting agitated. Saber's cheeks practically glow red, she looks so embarrassed. And so Shiro, if I may ask, please allow me to sleep with you tonight. When the sword and sheath are together, it is easier for them to restore their strength. And if we bring our bodies and souls close together like we did during that ritual, I nod silently. I'm much happier than I am embarrassed. I get to spend the night with Saber in my arms. Our bodies may not touch more than they are now, but we can be more intimate with our hearts. I'm glad. Then Shiro, I will prepare myself for tonight. So please return to your room. Saber stands up. I can't bear to let her go. But we can't stay like this forever, so I head back through the sliding door to my room. I turn back to look at Saber before I slide the door shut. Feels like I'm doing something wrong though, so I close the door quickly. I don't know why, why, but I find myself sitting atop my futon. My mind won't slow down. It's practically doing somersaults just at the thought of sleeping with Saber. This is for her, to help her, to grant one small wish of hers. If I keep on granting these small wishes up for her, it'll add up and maybe Saber will learn how to smile. But the war is nearing its end. I don't know how much time we have left to keep doing this. Excuse me, Shiro. The sliding door opens. I shake away the depressing thoughts circling my head and look to Saber. I turn and look up at her. She's... I quietly gulp. She's a figure of pure white in the darkness. Seeing her, all that restless worry I felt melts away. She's just too beautiful. My heart is unclouded now. Do you think it is strange for me to be in this? No, absolutely not. It's just, you're so beautiful, I don't know what to do. I mutter something unintelligible about how difficult it makes things when a girl's too pretty. Even if I explained it to Saber, she wouldn't understand. But my mind's practically shorted out. May I go over there, Shiro? Yeah, sure. For the first time, I realized she has beautiful, perfect toes. Just like me. While Saber walks across the tatami mat floor to get close, I get off the futon and pull the blanket back for her. I realize I'm one pillow short for the two of us to sleep together, but it's too late. Saber and I sit side by side next to the futon. One room, one futon, but Saber's with me. I shouldn't be having any impure thoughts. My face feels like it's on fire. I can't even look at Saber. Please, go ahead, Shiro. No, you go ahead, Saber. Well, we're not gonna get anywhere like this. So I hurry into the futon and make room for Saber. I thought I would give her the pillow, but she gently pushes it back to me. You should take this, Shiro. I would like to, um, use your arm as my pillow. Her words, barely a whisper, make my heart skip a beat. Saber surprisingly calm as she nestles into my arms. It's like she settled herself more than I am, settled herself more than I am holding her. A blade in its sheath. I remember Saber's words. Saber's about to drift off, pillowed on my arm, like a sword in its sheath. Her warm, soft scent, so close and so close and calms, rather than excites me. Saber's hand reaches for my hand. I take it inside the blanket and entwine my fingers with hers. And we drift off to sleep in silence. But before that, Saber. I call out to her as she lays beside me. I want to ask her at the end. I want to hear again why I desire her so much. Do you feel it, Shira? My magical energy should be, should be fully replenished by tomorrow morning if we continue as we are. By tomorrow, I'll be able to fight as your servant. Saber, this is all I need, Shiro. My role is to protect you and to obtain the Holy Grail. Until the war is over, I cannot think of anything else. That... Do you not agree, Shiro?
You have decided to fight until the end of this war. I can't argue that point. If we want to solve our problem, we first need to end this war. To start, I won't be able to protect Saber unless I defeat the man who's after her. But, is there really a way for us to defeat the King of Heroes? While the two of us lie quiet, we lay out into the tranquil darkness. I don't know how much time passes. My eyelids grow heavy. My body cries out for rest. But our entwined fingers stay warm. Saber. Yes. Let us do the thinking tomorrow, Shiro. We may come up with a good tomorrow. We may have come up with a good idea tomorrow and... She just wants to sleep together like this. She holds my hand gently as she says so. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. Yes. Good night, Shiro. When we wake, matters will return to normal. I lean my fist close to hers and close my eyes. The last thing I see is Saber smiling warmly. I don't care if that moment of vulnerability was only for the night. The hand holding mine right now is so, so warm. It's more than enough for me, and I fall into a satisfied sleep. The end of battle. Once everything is over, I'm not sure I can keep holding this hand. And then silence settles in. Wow. Wow, okay. That was beautiful. This is... Oh my goodness. Amazing chapter. I, there's not really much to say. Amazing chapter. Amazing. Holy crap. That's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment, I read them all, type into the next one. Man, this was definitely something. Like, yo, there's really not much for me to say. Like, um, I guess the next episode is the final one. I've really enjoyed this route, and I, I really, um, I can't wait for the next episode. That's really all I have to say. I really hope y'all enjoyed this video. Peace out. I love y'all. Type into the next one.